Hello, I'm not Chuck, and I'm not in my travel trailer today. I'm on top of it. And the reason I'm on top of it, yep, you guessed it, there's something that needs doing. And today's job is to replace the TV antenna that was on the travel trailer when I bought it with one I think will perform quite a lot better. Now, as you can tell, I've already gone a long way in getting the old antenna removed. Um, it was put on like most antennas are and most fixtures on top of travel trailers. It was screwed down and then all of the screw holes and all of the mounting hardware was covered with a liberal amount of Dicor lap sealant or something very similar to Dicor. So the first thing I had to do was try to scrape away as much of that as I possibly could. And in the process of scraping and pulling and tugging and cutting, um, I found that I was not going to be able to get enough of it uh, off by hand, so I decided that I would just cut away all of the roofing material uh, that was uh, that had a heavy la a layer of Dicor on top of it. So I'm already that far along with getting the antenna off. In fact, I'm even further than that. Uh, the antenna was put on this way. Of course it was on top of the rubber the rubber roof material but I couldn't figure out even after I got the die core off I couldn't figure out how to separate the antenna from the roof material what I finally discovered was that on one side of the antenna base there was a screw hole and of course it was covered up with die core as well but once I found that screw hole, I made pretty good progress after that. I removed the screw, and then I was faced with the problem of trying to figure out how the top part came off the base. And I finally discovered that it was a slide mechanism. So you slide the top part this way, and it separates from the base. The base plate is metal, the top part is plastic. Not a bad design, but trying to figure out how to get it, the two pieces separated was quite a challenge. And then of course, after I got them separated, it was a matter of removing uh, three screws that were holding the base plate to the rooftop. Those three screws were not in the place where they should have been. I guess because perhaps um, this had been mounted once before. The person who took it loose decided that the screw holes were stripped out or maybe the person who owned the uh, trailer before I did hit a limb or something and broke the holes open. Anyway, for some reason, um, they drilled new holes in the base plate instead of using the factory holes. So anyway, I'm not going to be using either one, so it doesn't matter. Now, I discovered that the coax junction was covered with a rubber sleeve, hopefully to keep water out of the coax. And as far as I can tell, there's been no water uh, enter into the coax, so I think it should be fine. And I'm going to reuse the coax that's already inside the travel trailer. Why am I replacing this antenna? Well, it didn't give me very good reception. It's a Jensen, and when I did a little Googling on the Internet, I discovered that it gets pretty bad reviews and uh, my experience with it was that people uh, camping in the same campground that I was were getting TV and I was getting absolutely nothing so I decided to replace the Jensen with something better now when I finally got the old antenna and I'll tell you about what I'm gonna put on um, in place of it in just a little bit but when I got all of the EPDM material off that had been uh, had that big heavy layer of Dicor lap sealant on top of it. I discovered that actually it had been, despite all that sealant, it had been leaking a little bit uh, under here. Now, it's pretty much dry, but I don't want it pretty much dry. Oh, and by the way, the leak was pretty small because there's no damage to the roof material. Uh, there's no sign of any uh, rod or being waterlogged or anything so i think it was probably a very small leak but i'm still going to uh, leave this uncovered as it turns out even though it's uh, the middle of november we're having uh, three pretty nice days in a row here in west tennessee the high each day is supposed to be 
um, between 50 and 56 degrees. So it's really nice. Not much wind, sun is shining, and I'm happy to be outdoors today. So I'm going to let this dry, and, uh, and then probably uh, day after tomorrow, uh, it'll be dry enough just with air drying that I can put the new antenna on. This is the bed in the bedroom of my travel trailer. And you might be wondering, why is there no mattress on the bed? And <clears throat> why is there a bucket on the bed? And why are you even in the bedroom? Because you were working on the roof. And why is there that ragged hole in the ceiling? Well, here's the story. When I was up on the roof, after I stopped filming, I decided to take my flashlight and shine it down inside the hole that the antenna was removed from. And when I did, guess what I saw? Water standing. It was standing, it was really odd looking because it was close to the hole and it was on top of something that looked like pink plastic. So I thought, well, um, I noticed that the sealant around the antenna hadn't been applied very well. It must have been leaking and the water was accumulating on top of this pink plastic. I sort of panicked a little bit, maybe not too bad, but I thought, well, I have to get that water out. Some way I have to get it out. So I decided what I would do would be to drill a hole down through that pink plastic because I knew I would have to drill a hole in the ceiling to install the new rotatable antenna. So I thought, well, I'll get Mrs. Not Chuck to hold a bucket underneath the ceiling and approximately where the hole is going to be and I'll drill down through the ceiling and when I drill all the way through the water will run out in the bucket. Maybe. I kept drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling and all I was doing was succeeding in wrapping the insulation, the pink fiberglass insulation that was just under that pink plastic around and around the drill bit. So I kept pulling the drill bit out, taking the plastic off, continuing to try and try and try to finally drill a hole through the ceiling. Well, I finally did, and no water came out. I kept drilling till I made a pretty big hole, I thought, in the ceiling. As it turns out, I was drilling right into the light fixture. That one right there. Well, I broke it. Uh, maybe I can salvage part of it. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, still no water came out. So I was feeling of this insulation that I was pulling out on the drill bit, and sure enough, it was wet. So here's my theory. My theory is that there was not a lot of water up there. And when I drilled through that pink plastic that was holding the water off the top of the fiberglass insulation, the insulation absorbed the water. But now I have wet insulation between the ceiling and the roof, and I have to do something about it. So the first thing I want to know is, how extensive is it? Well, if I go over here to where the speakers were, I can see there that the insulation is completely dry. I've stuck my fingers up in there and there's no sign of moisture there. I did the same thing on the that speaker hole and found that it's dry too. I also took the air conditioning vent and there's no sign of water uh, in that hole. Of course, there probably wouldn't be because that's actually inside the vent. Uh, the inside would not be exposed to water. So my next step is to feel of this insulation and it's damp but not terribly wet. And there's some of that pink plastic that apparently was on top of the insulation. See if I can find another piece. I guess I dropped it. But anyway, it was uh, covering the top of the fiberglass. In addition to that, there's some foil that you can probably see right there. 
So I'm hoping that if I can open an access hole to the ceiling, maybe not a very big hole, I can pull out that wet insulation and replace it with dry insulation and avoid a major uh, problem with taking the whole ceiling panel down. Uh, we'll see how that works out. All right, so I'm off to look for a tool to open up a hole. Well, thanks to my local Harbor Freight store, I think maybe I've come up with the right tool for cutting an inspection hole in the ceiling. It's an oscillating saw. I'll turn it on briefly. It's supposed to be able to make plunge cuts as well as straight line cuts. I have the blade in there angled so that I can hold a uh, blade parallel to the ceiling while the body of the saw is pointing downward slightly. I've never used one of these before, so we'll see how it works. I've decided to try to make the first hole large enough to poke the camera up through the hole and try to inspect the uh, area between the ceiling and the roof and then that'll help me decide how big a hole I need in order to make the necessary repairs or at least that's what I hope. I think that's got it. Yeah. Oh, I see the issue. Turns out the <coughs> excuse me, turns out the ceiling panel is only an eighth of an inch thick. But because this was this place was where the light was mounted, it's been reinforced on the back side. <coughs> Excuse me, I have sawdust in my throat. It's been reinforced on the backside with a quarter inch piece of uh, piece of plywood. <coughs> and the ceiling panel is <coughs> excuse me, glued to that plywood. All right, let me see what I can figure out, get the dust out of my throat and off the camera lens. We'll go again. Well, fortunately, all that was holding this portion of the ceiling panel to this plywood backer was a few staples. And I managed to pull the, the ceiling piece that I cut out away from the plywood backer. And uh, there are a couple of staples left and I pulled those out. So now the plywood backer, as you can see, is loose and able to move around. I'm not going to try to get that out yet. I hope I won't have to take it out. Even though I've cut through part of it, I still believe it'll be fairly sturdy and I'm going to leave it in there and try to reuse it. What I am going to do is cut these small wires here and uh, push the yellow and white ones back up in the ceiling to get them out of the way in the hopes that I can slide the plywood backer out of the way and get the camera and light through the hole that I've cut in order to see what all uh, damage is done between the ceiling and the roof. All right, I have pushed the uh, plywood out of the way. I also uh, cut a hole through the insulation that was here and pulled out a big chunk. And as you can see, this is really wet right here, but it's fairly dry on the edges. So I'm somewhat encouraged in the hope that there's not a lot of water that actually has been inside uh, and I'm hoping it hasn't been for very long. I see no sign of any water where I can put my fingers up here. But now that I have the hole, I'm going to take the camera, put it on a different tripod, and put it up between the roof and the ceiling and see what I can see. Okay, here you go up into the area between the 
roof and the ceiling. May or may not have enough light. Of course, I couldn't see what the camera was seeing. Right now, it's pointed toward the front of the travel trailer, and you can see on the right side of the picture some of that pink plastic I was talking about. Now we're turning toward the driver's side of the travel trailer, and you can see on the bottom of the roof plywood some signs of moisture, and also that piece of fiberglass is wet as we're looking at the picture. Now we're continuing to rotate the camera. You can see some remainders of fiberglass there that have been wet. You can also see a little wet spot on the right side of the picture. That big wire that you see in the center of the picture is the coax from the antenna that had not yet been removed. Now we continue to turn the camera. We're looking toward the passenger side. Once again, we see some water on the bottom of the roof panel, and we also see some fiberglass that appears to be damp. Now we continue to rotate the camera and we're looking back uh, toward the front of the travel trailer and back where we started. So there was some water damage to the inside of the travel trailer between the roof and the ceiling in the bedroom. The damage, however, is relatively minor and is limited to some wet fiberglass insulation. The good news is there's no sign of any mold, no mildew, no darkening of the wood for any reason. In fact, the water seems to be very fresh and not a lot of it. That leads me to believe that the leak hadn't been going on very long. What has been going on long, however, is this video. So I'm going to cut it off here, but I promise you in part two, I will show you the successful installation of a new rotatable TV antenna, and I will show you the installation of replacement fiberglass for the fiberglass that was wet and was removed, and I will show you the hole that the fiberglass was put in through, successfully patched, and looking pretty nice. Until next time, remember... I'm not Chuck.